The Data Cloud Diaries, accessing DMOs, data model objects, through Salesforce and through the APIs. Welcome to another episode of the Data Cloud Diaries. Today, we're going to be talking about DMOs, data model objects. So we've been looking at how to ingest them, how to bring them in, and later we'll be looking at doing calculated insights and we'll be doing actions. But the question is, how do we get to that data in our DMOs? And so today we're going to look at accessing the DMO objects from inside of Salesforce and through the APIs. So here we are looking at a Salesforce org with data cloud. And we've in previously epi previous episodes, we've loaded data. And one thing I want to call out is you start with, take a look at your data spaces. Your data spaces control the visibility of your DMOs and your DLOs. So from here, I have created, there is the default data space, which um, is where things go by default. And I created a Steve TechArc separate data space. And that has some significant ramification. And I'll get to that in a minute. But what we've got is you need to know your data space. Now to give a user access, when you create the data space, it creates permission sets and the users need to be in the permission sets to access that data. So what we're going to look at is there were some of the data streams I brought in. And what we're going to do is look at, um, I brought in some airport data from airports, frequencies, counties, regions, runways, all the runways in the world for where there are airports. And these are data streams which flow into the data lake objects. And you'll see that I have these in my data lake objects. And if you look at your data lake objects like airport, you'll be able to see its um, API name, which is the DLL, data lake. Now these then can be mapped and you'll see that this data lake object is mapped to a DMO, which is our target object model for data cloud. So data lakes are just transient. They, they're meant to just to be the pass through and you'll see we're going to the mappings. So when we go to our data model objects, what I'm gonna look at doing is take a look at, I have air here, let's take a look at this airport, DLM. So those are my data model objects, my DMOs. So I want to be able to see these airports. And so your first stop is with your data explorer. And in your data explorer, you pick your data space and you pick default. And you'll notice that if I went data lake, there's no object, there's, I can see the default data lake objects. Now these have the default, let's actually switch to the data model objects, the DMOs, and there are no default DMOs. So we're gonna switch to my segmentation, my data space, and we're gonna go to data model objects, DMOs, and now I can even go to OA airport and it's gonna query the data. Now a key element, and this is showing me my data, is the data explorer is limited to 100 rows and 10 columns. So you can edit your columns right here and take one off and add in a new one. So you can see we're limited to 10. And so if I wanted, let's say, latitude and degrees, you'll see now latitude and degrees is brought in. So this is a window of 100 rows and 10 columns. Now what you can do is you can take a look at the SQL, not SQL. This is the SQL that is used to view this data. So this is my ability to see the SQL to view the airports. Now we're going to clean this up a little bit. Um, and there's our idents. Let's go to the copy SQL or excuse me, we're gonna edit the columns and I'm just gonna update this. So what I've done is I've edited the columns, chosen the ones I want, and now you'll see that I can see the names of the airports. There's a Stevens strip and I can see the regions, the countries, the idents, 
and the GPS codes and the elevation and the continent, North America. So this allows me to see my data. Now, here is a neat thing you can do from within Salesforce. You can copy the SQL. Notice I didn't, I said SQL and not SQL. You copy the SQL and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the data explorer. We're gonna go to the debugger. So from here, I'm gonna go to the developer console. And now what I can do is go to the query editor and normally I would write select ID name from account. And this is running the SQL. And this is showing me that there is a single account in this Salesforce org. But I can also paste in the SQL. And this is the SQL, which is pulling from my DLM. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So you'll see I've pasted, the, I've gone from the Data Explorer, copied the SQL, not the SQL, the SQL, and pasted it in and I can execute. And now you'll see that I am able to access the data. And let's see if we can limit this to 200. And we have more data here. So what we've got is we have the ability to use the, de the, the debug, the developer console, and to take the SQL that we used and bring it over and execute. So inside of our Salesforce core org, we can access our DMOs. Now that we've looked at how being inside a Salesforce core, and we are in the Salesforce core org that is the primary control for data cloud. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at how might we access that data from an API. And so we're gonna use Postman in order to reach in. So here we are in Postman. And what we're gonna be doing is first we need to authenticate. So we're gonna do standard OAuth authentication. So I'm sending my credentials and I'm getting the access token. So here is my access token. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to make a direct query. I can actually hit serve, uh, d uh, the API for SSOT. So this allows me to hit the data cloud objects query. Now I'm hitting an object which is in the default data space. So it's gonna, and there you'll now notice I had put in the header. What, I, what you didn't see is inside the header, I had pasted the bearer token. So it has the bearer token. And here in the body, I have actually the SQL command for hitting a DMO. And now you'll notice that I'm getting access to that data. And what you can do is you can switch between your Salesforce Data Explorer and get your SQL commands. Now, just like we did in the debugger, the console, I decide I wanna take this SQL command and I bring it over to my postman and I paste it in here and I try to run it, but I get an error. And it's saying my DLM, my data lake, my data model object is not in scope of default. So the problem is that when I put my data model objects inside the data space out of default, they moved into a higher level of security and the direct connect API does not access the data directly. So what I have to do is to get to that. So if you want to access default data, space data inside your default data space, then you can hit just do the simple endpoint. But I want to be able to get to my data, which is my airport data. And I'm going to get errors because it's telling me it's not in scope. And so what you have to do is you have to do a key exchange. So what I need to do is I'm going to authenticate. I'm gonna grab this access token, and then I have to go exchange it for a direct token, a token that will go to data cloud, but you'll notice this key parameter right here, the data space. So what I need to do is go into my header, is go into my header,
It's right here. Actually, it's in my subject token. And I'm going to paste the access token I got going straight to Salesforce. So I'm, I'm going to this endpoint, services A360 token. So by going to this different endpoint, not the previous one we used, was, which was the standard OAuth 2, but we are now going to an services A360 that allows me to pass in the data space. And so when I send this, I now have a second access token. And this second access token now has direct access. So it's a bigger one because it's a JWT token. And I grab this, copy it, and I go to my direct query. And now I'm actually going to the namespace that was provided, the instance URL right here that was provided in my authentication. So it gives me the instance, tells me it's a JWT token, and now I'm gonna go do a direct call against it. And what I need to do is go to the header and put the bearer token, that big old JWT token, and paste it there. And now what I'm gonna do is come back and grab this SQL that I want, which is accessing a data model data in my data space. And now I'm gonna put this in my body right here. So I'm putting this here. So I'm gonna be querying for my airports. And there is the data. So we had to do, we can get to the data space data by doing an exchange for the direct token. And then we can make a direct endpoint against data cloud. And this allows me to query my data inside of data cloud. So now I've got the ability to be using data explorer, look around, and then decide I'm gonna get the data. So you set up your ingestion you bring in the data through the data streams, making it to the data lakes. You're gonna enrich the data, get it into your data model objects. We might be doing what we'll be talking about sooner, calculated insights and actions. But what you're doing is that data is in there and it's growing and it's really important to you. So we're showing how you can use the Explorer to view it. You can use the debug window in order to access it. And I'm showing you how you can also get to it through your APIs. In the next section, we're gonna be talking about how to get to this data from Apex. How can you then tap into it with screens and other functionality and get access to this data? So that'll be in the next session. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining Access Accelerated. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to Steve TechArk, www.stevetechark.com and Steve TechArk at YouTube. And have a great day.